My name is Emily and I'm an A26 Boston volunteer. In April, I led a virtual workshop over Zoom on crafting the horror story for students in third, fourth, and fifth grades. Like the best scientists artists, we discussed, dissected, and devised. We talked about using world building to build environment and suspense and the importance to the genre of the well-planned surprise, we dissected short horror stories, most of them only two sentences long, to discover how an effective setup prepares us for a surprise that we never see coming but always feel is on its way, and then, using pieces of all the things we'd learned, like the best Dr. Frankensteins, we began to assemble our own short horror stories. Today, I'm partnering with 826 Nationals hashtag a good time to write campaign, which promotes writing during school closures across the country. I'm going to very briefly lay out the structure of my workshop, including some aspects I did have to cut for time, for, so anyone interested in sculpting horror stories with younger students might have a model for it. We started off simply listing our favorite supernatural creatures and associations we make with horror, including books or movies we've read or watched in the genre. Then we read two-sentence horror stories, some of which I'd found online and some of which were original, which are valuable for how quickly and efficiently they have to establish both the scene and the world and the twist or surprise or the scare. We also discussed the use of foreshadowing and how effective horror storytelling often alludes to its horrific aspects before the reader even knows to interpret them as illusions. Pretty tricky. Then we implemented this learning to write our own two-sentence horror stories. Next, after a short break, we watched a video recording of Alvin Schwartz's short horror story, The Green Ribbon, taken from the Young People's Horror Collection in a Dark, Dark Room and Other Scary Stories. Now, The Green Ribbon is remarkable because of how sparsely and efficiently it tells its story and how significant its twist ending becomes as a result of that carefully structured storytelling. So after watching and briefly discussing it, we began our final assignment. I asked my students to pick a person, place, or thing and write down a secret about it that they would reveal at some point in their piece, something unusual, surprising, even sinister and scary. Then, students were instructed to describe the person, place, or thing in ways that alluded to the secret without giving it away. They were tasked with constructing a scene based on these descriptions in which the secret was revealed, and then they essentially worked backwards to embellish and elongate the setup in service of that eventual reveal. While I'm not always one to pre-write extensively, I cautioned that knowing your story's secrets beforehand allows you to best prepare for them. As with building a house, maybe, if you know the whole time what you're building towards, it's easier to lay a sensical and supportive foundation and prepare for future embellishments. But first you have to know the basics of the house that you're planning. So to be as scary and surprising as effective as possible, we do have to plan for it. ran the gamut in age, interest in horror, and interest in attending the workshop at all. Some students came in costume, some were seasoned writers, and some were afraid of the genre but had been prompted by their parents to be brave. Now I'm a former ghost tour guide and I'm accustomed to appearing in public looking spooky, so I dressed in a toned down version of the undead character I used to play. But beyond the black lipstick and the potentially unnerving content of the stories, I was careful to craft the workshop in such a way that it would not, I hope, feel unduly frightening or stressful. And I returned again and again to the practical nature, to the practical aspects of the craft, breaking down everything into pieces and relevant terminology that might actually be applied across genres, though it was emphasized here as being useful to horror. The workshop ran about 90 minutes long um, and had time for the two sections with a five or ten minute break in between. As for me, my experience as a writer comes mostly from working as a ghost tour guide and working as a performance poet. So as a ghost tour guide, I would take the bare bones of historical stories and uh, turn them into to uh, more intriguing narratives, and that's where my experience and interest in the genre and this workshop came from. And that, as they say, is the end of that.
Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. Remember, it's a good time to write. Learn more about the campaign at 826national.org. And don't forget to follow 826 Boston on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn for access to student stories, weekly writing sparks, and so much more. Thank you, 826 Boston. Thank you to my students. And thank you at home. These are scary and surprising times, but we can always plan for it.